News Point at 11. Good Friday evening. I'm Tanae Howard and tonight on News Point, an elaborate grow operation busted the search for the people who were growing magic mushrooms. Tanae. Well, tonight, young women who say they were sexually abused by former USA Gymnastics team doctor Larry Nasser. They can get some closure. Nasser was sentenced to 60 years in federal prison. More than 100 women and girls have now accused Nasser of molesting them. They include Olympians, Ali Raisman, Michaela Maroney, and Gabby Douglas, a part of the Fab Five. Today's sentence was for child pornography charges. Investigators found more than 37,000 images. At 4.30, we told you that there were three people struck by lightning and one was fatally hit. We have just learned within the last 15 minutes that the person thought to be dead originally has regained a pulse and consciousness. What about I, an Englishman? Ooh, you got some? Uh, yes, I have. Okay, call a friend. Right. Tweet me. Twi oh, no, we're not public on that. Jesus Christ. Send me a DM. Slide oh, in the DM. What's the DM? Slide Dr. The Martin. Direct messages. Oh, do, oh, those things. Slide in right. my DM okay. with your friend. <laughs> we can set it up. Okay, okay. but <laughs> Scottish? Ooh, yeah. Ginger hair? Nope. <laughs> There's some good looking ginger haired men out there. Here in Vancouver, where the devil is bringing the heat to the TV screens this winter, we're going to give you some behind the scenes look. Hey there, Dan and Fanchon. We are here with the Clinton campaign, and it is just a mix of emotions going on right now. That's because this race is so tight. A lot of those key battleground states and states that they hope will be toss ups are just too close to call right now. Yes, it's back with us, guys. Look what just happened. Live TV. He is just so lovely. This is Bryce Shear Gray. We all know him as Hakeem Lyon. You look great tonight. You look beautiful. Thank you I so much. You like I just ago. saw you this morning. We're you old friends. Now change my dress. Yeah. You have on a very dapper tailored suit. Who you're wearing tonight? Right now, hundreds of sex offenders across Indiana are unaccounted for, and officials say your help is the number one thing that can help track them down. We begin news point at 11 with breaking news tonight. A state trooper involved in a shooting with a suspect. And now his canine officer is also missing at this hour. We are having technical difficulties, but here is what we can tell you back out here in the studio. See, that's so unfair. <laughs> that is so unfair. That is so unfair. All those Ed Sheeran lookalikes, that's so unfair. Oh, wait, I do like him, though. Oh, hold on a minute. I, wait, 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 wait. It's uh, the music. It's because he's a musician. And he's a cool looking guy. He is. Yeah. Okay, that one I do. Can you get it? So, <laughs> Walking in that hospital room earlier today to see this 25 year old woman so badly beaten and battered. It was just something that literally took your breath away, but she sat there with such bravery to tell the story of one of the darkest nights in her life. 25 year old Carly Hager is not a victim. She's a survivor who lived to tell her story. And he tried to rip my tongue out with his bare fingers from here all the way up to here and he succeeded halfway. From her hospital bed with bruises and bite marks all over her body, Carly recalled the traumatizing episode with her mother by her side. She says she and her now ex-boyfriend, 26-year-old Ryan Cameron, returned home from a wedding Saturday night with friends. After launching a verbal assault, things got physical. He locked his friends outside of our house and ran to the bathroom and locked us in the bathroom. That's where Carly says Ryan bit off a piece of her ear and she was beaten until she passed out. I woke up to Ryan just sitting next to me like he thought I was dead. Those friends called police. A move Julian Center CEO Catherine O'Connor says may have saved Carly's life. Those people intervened. Um, they did what they could to stop the situation and they called the police to make sure something happened to protect this victim. And that's exactly what should happen. Carly's mother says she didn't see any warning signs, but these visible signs won't define her baby girl. Her strength and beauty is inside and the scars will heal. And in time, so will her heart. And I'm incredibly proud. Carly says after a loving two year relationship, the mental, verbal and physical abuse just started about a month ago. She wants this story to warn others not to ignore the signs and know this is not what love looks like. You have to tell somebody you can't be embarrassed. You can't be ashamed. <laughs> you have to tell somebody because it, I almost died and it can it can happen. 
And again, 26 year old Ryan Cameron is in jail tonight facing a list of felony counts in connection to that assault. Now the family has set up a GoFundMe account to help pay for these medical expenses as it will be a long road ahead for Carly. We'll have that information for you at fox59.com. From Eskenazi Health, Tanae Howard, Fox 59 News. 17 year old James Franklin Jr. is back on the court in full force, driving to the basket as the Cathedral Irish get ready for their season opener. But just a month ago, this was James in the hospital, connected to tubes after having a part of his brain removed. They like, how are you living to this day? They didn't expect me to be here, to be honest with you. James is a walking, basketball playing miracle. He had a stroke shortly after birth that left scar tissue on his brain that caused seizures, meaning mom and dad always had to be right there watching him. James had a seizure on the court last December as his dad looked on. And I ran down the bleachers and you know, got him before he fell. And I just say, hey, man, uh, Riley, it is. It's, it's, it's even no, no questions, no more. It's where we're going. The family finally decided to head to Riley Hospital for Children. That's where they met Dr. Jody Smith and Dr. Kelly Kramer. We wanted to find that area of the brain that was causing the seizures, and if possible, take it out. Tests showed removing the part of the brain with seizure activity shouldn't affect his motor skills. James's biggest concern was being able to play basketball after surgery. Literally cut out the area of the seizure focus and left that out and left the motor cortex, the important part of the brain, and literally resected that entire area, which was not an insignificant area. It was, it was quite a large area of brain. And a month later, a 17-year-old has his life back. James hasn't had a single seizure since the surgery. I'm thankful for that and feel like I'm at the point where I don't have to worry about anything and so do my parents and it's a happy life right now. We begin News Point at 11 with breaking news tonight. A state trooper involved in a shooting with a suspect and now his canine officer is also missing at this hour. We are having technical difficulties, but here is what we can tell you back out here in the studio about what is happening in this story. So this went down about an hour ago in the area of 38th, 38th Street and Post. State police say the man they encountered ran away from the scene. They encountered him earlier, caught up with him a little bit later, and that's when the K-9 attacked the suspect. He was released. That suspect exchanged fire. We do not know if the K-9 was hit, but the dog did take off running in the midst of the chaos. Let's hear from state police what they had to say earlier about what to do if you see the K-9 officer. We have officers have seen the dog but not been able to catch it. Uh, we're warning the, the public uh, not to approach the dog if they see it in their yard, in their garage or, or near their house. And we can report that trooper is OK. The suspect, however, was taken to the hospital in serious condition. He was hit. We will have much more on this developing story about the search for the canine officer throughout the newscast and also on fox59.com. And back out here in the studio, other big stories we are following for you tonight. The highest ranked woman at IMPD has a new title and it's on the national level. How she's using that title to get other women to join the force and Indiana lagging behind in vaccinating children against a sexually transmitted disease that could lead to cancer. But first tonight, a serial burglar on the streets of Carmel. Police say that man could be linked to multiple cases over the last year. Fox 59's Haley Bull is in Carmel tonight and shows us why he's targeting the area. All right, good tips there. Thank you, Haley. Right now, police in Danville are on to two men who were caught on camera buying things with a stolen credit card at a gas station. But here's the deal. Police say that card came from one of two cars they also stole. Here was a closer look at these guys. Those cars were taken from the Clear Creek subdivision in Danville overnight Sunday. The thieves also used the credit card to buy more than $1,100 worth of electronics at the Avon Walmart. If you recognize them, please call police. Right now, Metro police are searching for the person who shot a teenager in the face and then just took off. The 18 year old told police she was walking to a gas station near Addison and Turner when a black SUV pulled up and someone inside that truck shot her, then sped off. She went to the hospital in good condition early this morning. We will stay on top of that story and her condition. 
IMPD's top ranking female officer is taking on a new national role. Today, IMPD announced Deputy Chief Valerie Cunningham is now the president of the National Association of Women Law Enforcement Executives, also known as NOLI. She's stepping into her new role with the goal of recruiting more women so more can break the brass ceiling. That's especially true for IMPD, which has a below average percentage of female officers. Cunningham says she wants to keep seeing efforts like the behind the badge workshops to show women there is room for them in a male dominated profession. The sky's the limit and that's what they need to know. They could be anything they want to be. And if they don't want to be an executive, that's fine. You can be a leader at whatever level you're at. On average, women make up about 13% of police agencies and less than 3% of those supervisory positions. The man considered a person of interest in the murders of two teenagers in Delphi is facing new charges in Colorado. Daniel Nations is now accused of trying to get into someone's car and assault them. Police arrested Nations a couple weeks ago, saying he threatened people with a hatchet near Colorado hiking trail. After his arrest, the deputies contacted Indiana State Police about a possible connection to the murders of Abby Williams and Libby German. State Police went to Colorado to interview Nations and say they cannot include or exclude him as a suspect in the murders. Police put a suspected drug dealer behind bars. Investigators say 37 year old Jamil Roberts has been selling thousands of dollars worth of cocaine and marijuana across county lines. They found scales, guns and cash inside his Avon home and more drugs at his properties in Marion County. Police are now targeting highways and main roads to stop the drug trade. IU is spending some big bucks. We're talking $50 million over the next five years to tackle the state's drug problem, specifically the opioid crisis. IU officials made that announcement today with Governor Eric Holcomb. The new initiative will involve research projects on all IU campuses. They'll study the root causes of addiction and how to make it harder for drug users to get a hold of opioids. Now is the time to bring to bear the resources of all IU campuses to help address and mitigate this destructive and deadly public health crisis. IU officials and Governor Holcomb say policy recommendations from this project could change some Indiana laws and the way they're enforced. All right, so it is the only vaccine that prevents cancer. It's recommended for children. But the State Department of Health says parents are not getting their kids vaccinated to prevent the human papillomavirus. Health experts say that's because HPV is a sexually transmitted disease and many parents think the vaccine will encourage kids to have sex. But HPV is the primary cause of cervical cancer. Now lawmakers are getting involved. A bill enacted earlier this year puts the State Department of Health in charge of coming up with new ways to get more parents to have their kids vaccinated. We are 45th in the nation for young women who start the vaccine series by the 11 to 13 age range. And we're last in the nation for young men who start the series. And that's very worrisome to me because these are preventable diseases. It's recommended both boys and girls get the vaccine to prevent the spread of the virus. 80% of adults will have the virus at some point in their life. Tonight, Eastside residents got to voice their opinions on what to do with the vacant lot that used to be the RCA plant. The plant was torn down back in January and now the city is trying to decide, hey, what are we going to do with it? Tonight, a second public meeting was held as part of the Sherman Park Reuse Initiative to get ideas for that 50 acre space. Um, it could benefit the community in terms of jobs. It can benefit the community in terms of parks, trails, green spaces. It can benefit the community in terms of potential for education, some commercial development. Some people would like to have a really great grocery store there. We don't have that on the Neary side. Uh, so there are a lot of things that could have a good community benefit. If you miss tonight's meeting, there will be eight more public meetings in the future. Hey, Brian. Today, good evening. All right, we'll see you soon. Thanks, Brian. Still to come tonight on News Point. Halloween is all about some scary fun, but something scary that's not so fun. Germs on Halloween costumes. Turns out it's a big problem. What could be lurking in those wigs and masks you try on? And could protests during the national anthem come to an end? What the NFL is considering to prevent players from kneeling during the Star Spangled Banner. Plus, a mystery surrounding Oreos, and it's not who ate them all how you can become a whole lot richer if you solve it.